Our guest today is Connor Masterson. He said, I'm a ready man. A graduate of Liverpool FC's academy, Connor has now established himself as a professional footballer within the UK with over 70 senior appearances. Very confident. I'm not sure if that's typical for Ireland. And over 30 underage Irish caps. Described as the million dollar kid due to his one million euro transfer fee to Liverpool, Connor talks today about all things Liverpool, professional football and everything in between. It was an unbelievable experience just going out to even warm up and just see the fans and the atmosphere, it was just surreal really. We hope you enjoy the podcast. We're live baby. We're back. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Connor. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for your time, Connor. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, like we were speaking about off camera, no podcast experience. No, no. No, this would be my first one. So, a few interviews, but never yeah. a podcast. Not so. an open kind of form. No. Well, sit back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> All right. <everyone>. Nice. <laughs> relax. <laughs> really casual conversation. How did you find the game yesterday? Good to get a workout. Oh, it was really good. Very competitive, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Everybody was. was was that really on it, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Like feet sore as well. The yeah, I have a few oh. blisters now. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was saying the same, yeah. yeah Zach, more, Zach came in today and he was like, me feet are <laughs> bit, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, It was so hot. Um, how we started, right. Quick fire questions. Get you eased into it. The, the key question. You actually, Joe, you know I've asked it the last few times. You asked the key yeah. question. You yeah. asked this it. Is, this is my most question important originally. One. Rank these three in order. Chocolate, sweets and crisps. Oh, I'm a big chalky man now, so I'm going to go chocolate... <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to go sweets and then I'm going to go crisps. It's, yeah. the, it's the right order. That's it's the only right order. answer. No one ever goes at mine. Like Apart from Killer. Killer, like, killer was, was killer killer. mine, yeah. Crisps, killer, yeah. yeah. Crisps, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no I'm with you there. Favourite chalk? Oh, I love Bueno. Oh, yeah, I'll Chocolate yeah, Bueno, yeah. yeah no, no, which okay. one? The, the normal ones or, you know, the little small fellas? No, I just love the normal ones. Yeah, no. The hippo. You're talking about the hippo. Yeah, he's talking about the hippo. Well, it's a joke. No, you know the one we get cheap version in Little Nally? The smaller kinders. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. With the little white like, oh, chocolate. Yeah. Oh, do you like the white yeah. chocolate? I don't like the white chocolate. I'll eat any bueno. I'm all bueno. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. there with you. Try to like, go with the second question yeah. as well. Who is the best player that you've ever played against? And it can be they, like they've had a great career or whatever, or in that game, there's someone was unbelievable against yeah. you. Um, the best player I've played against, probably, I have two. Yeah. I have two I have. So it was when I was younger, I was playing for Liverpool in an under-18s game. We played Man City and Sancho played. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I've never seen a guy just destroy a fullback as much as he did. Really? Yeah, and we got beat, I think we got beat like 6 now at the Jeez. time. Wow. Yeah. yeah, they had a good team at the time. So, yeah, I'm going to go with him. But when I was at QPR, I remember the COVID year? Yeah. And we were coming back, we'd done like a few friendlies. Mm. And we played Chelsea. And uh, Kante played, and I've <laughs> honestly, unbelievable. He was everywhere. He just yeah, yeah. winning the ball back, passing, like dribbling, chopping players. Just every, he had everything. And he's underrated technically, isn't he? Oh, yeah. massively. When I played him there, I was like, whoa, this guy's got everything. Yeah, everyone's yeah. kind of like, oh, he just gets around, wins the ball. No, but he's, he's, but he's, got, he's actually got a lot yeah, more. The amount of times you nick it and just go on runs. Mm. Yeah, exactly. That's what he did. He just got the ball and just run past players and slide mm. someone in or. Make a pass out wide yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. And That's then you go and yeah. run back and you get the ball back again. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's only it when you see them lads in person, you're like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, like you're ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought. He's not big, is he? He's, he's no, only he's small. He's tiny. Little. Honestly, he's about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, he's wow. not big, like. That's crazy. He's strong as a horse. He's a joke. Yeah. I think he's underrated. Yeah, even yeah, still to this day, yeah. I still think he's underrated. He needs to get fit again. Yeah, but he's going Saudi, is he not? He's the talk, yeah. Him and Maris, did you hear about that? Really? He's gone Saudi. Is I know, the, I heard yeah, that as well, actually. Yeah. I'd be fairly disappointed. He's well. got loads He's still about him, yeah? Yeah. Right. The other side of it, who is or was your favourite player to play with? Favourite player to play with? You get so many answers we get. Are like, lads, they're just like, they get, you just get on great with them or when you're playing you're with them. You're actually really like, good, like, yeah. For you playing Santa Hash, probably yeah. like a good partner where you're like, I'm just playing yeah, Santa Hash. Yeah, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to, Mainly when I was playing, obviously I played only mainly at first team level at QPR, Cambridge and stuff. But at first team level, I'm gonna go with his name's Grant Hall. Don't know if you know him. He's at Middlesbrough. 
He was at Rotherham this season as well. And he's like, he's a bit older now. He's about 33, I think. Yeah. But his experience and stuff while yeah. I was playing for QPR at the time, he helped me so much. Yeah. And I really enjoyed playing with him. Like nice. on the, like in a match day. Yeah. yeah Obviously yeah. I've trained with a lot better players. Yeah, but yeah. when I was in a match situation. He's he your guy kind of like yeah, you could rely like, on. Yeah. Yeah. I was very impressed with him. His communication, just just little things he knew where to be and he put me in the right positions as well. Mm, mm, Do you know what I mean? Because mm. he wasn't, I was a bit, probably a bit more agile, a bit quicker than him because I was younger. Mm. He'd tell me, he'd go win the ball, you drop off. Do you know, just little things like that mm. and I was really impressed with him like that and he helped me a lot and yeah, I'm going to go with Grant Hall. It's funny because yeah. in the games yesterday, you're you're more so, and we played, to give context, we played a 7v7 pro game but it's a lot of younger lads. You were probably a little bit older, you, Ford, Ole, yeah. Yeah, a little yeah, bit older, the older than lads, the rest yeah. of the lads. Yeah. You kind of took that role yesterday. I know it's a lot. You communicate an awful lot in that yeah. small side of the game. Do you you probably find that you've probably been you know, you've been around some unbelievable players yeah. playing senior level, obviously for a long time now. Do you find like your communication stuff has developed by just listening to others, or did you have it naturally prior? Um, no, as I've definitely got older, I think I was always a bit of a talker. Like when I was playing for Ireland and stuff, I played at the back and I was ca- like captain yeah, yeah. and stuff. So I kind of was a bit of a leader, but. As I've got older and, you know, you learn the game more mm-hmm. and I find it makes the game so much easier once I'm talking and it makes my me more alert. Yeah, it keeps you switched on, doesn't it? keeps me yeah, switched on. Yeah. So when I'm talking, I know I'm in, I'm in game mode, if yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And I felt it's made the game just much easier for me. Yeah. And I've learned, I've actually had better results, better games because of that. So, yeah, as I've got older, especially... I think it's, it's naturally kind of just progressed. Yeah, it's just, yeah. yeah, it's progressed. And yeah. you get more confident in yourself. You mature mm. as a person as well. Mm. Mm. So you feel like you can do it, do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. So Don't definitely, yeah. Makes sense. And you're back from, how many holidays do you have this year? <laughs> I've had two this holiday. Two, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's not too bad. That's not, not too, too bad. bad. Not too yeah. bad. What's your, what's your favourite holiday destination? Favourite holiday destination? No, I went to, this was my first year going to Dubai. I went to Dubai. Now I have to say that cool. was special. Right. Really enjoyed it. I went with my girlfriend and... Uh, we had a great time. We had a really good time. And uh, I met, I'm obviously with Gillingham now, and I met a lad out there. And I've seen a few other players and all, and we met up. But it was nice. So, yeah. Nice really, in, it's just a different world. So It is. It seems mad. Yeah, it's yeah big, it is. It's a hot destination for footballers now, isn't it? Yeah, it is a very hot one. I have never been, obviously. And, you know, when you're a bit hesitant about going, yeah, you know, it's yeah. totally different. People are saying, you know, you have to be careful of, you know. Same anywhere, yeah. really, isn't it? Yeah. That's but nice. when I got there... First few days, I was I was a bit overwhelmed. I'll be honest; it's totally different. But then I was like, "Yeah, it's really enjoyed it, loved it. Nice, nice. nice. Yeah. It looks looks the part as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. It it's nice. good. And last one, favorite pair of boots. What do you rock at the moment? I'm rocking the Nike Phantoms at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, is it the GTs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm, I'm Very wearing, nice. Yeah, really nice. Obviously, I wore the Phantom. What was the ones before that? The blue ones, the GXs, <sighs> I think. I don't know them. the name of them, but yeah, I know, I know what they look like. I had them. They were good, but these ones we, we are wearing at the minute, they're lovely. Yeah, really they like are. them. Very comfy. And what's your favourite of all time? Do you have like one of your, like yeah. the, Some people have good memories of boots. Yeah, I used to wear Preds. Yeah? Yeah, when yeah. I was yeah. younger. Yeah, you know the ones without the laces though? Yeah. Right. So just oh. add, so you have the, the Preds like that mm-hmm. with the, what you call the it? Tongue. The, the tongue. The tongue. The ones just after that, it was about, I was about... 12 or 13 I the think the Gerard was. ones yeah yeah yeah. yeah they I had, had the red and the, the blue they had a different yeah, version that yeah, were in blue exactly. yeah, I had so them I, I really loved them as well so yeah I'm gonna go with them ones nice. everyone has a good old school such a centre half you know, like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Phantoms are the modern centre half boot aren't they yeah, they're, but they're, like the Harry Kane wears them like yeah, yeah. so they kind of they're much more they're diverse bit, yeah anyone can wear them now can't yeah. they yeah, yeah. Like, no white players though you don't see that anymore <laughs> yeah. you don't see that right bit of background you're at what age now? 24. 24, getting up there. Yeah. Is this... Uh, uh, this is, is funny because the date of birth on Wikipedia for every guest we've had has been wrong. Wrong. Okay. What's your date of birth? The 8th of the 9th, 1998. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Oh, nice. Very good. <laughs> the first one correct. Fantastic. Very, very nice. So, you're at the sign for Gillingham, yeah. like full time. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Good Thank stuff. You. Yeah, excellent. You went on two loan moves there, yeah, correct? So, I you did. went... Obviously, last season, but you went the season prior as well. Were yeah. you there for the for the full year for both times? No, last season I was actually in January, and this season it was in January. So, okay, yeah, okay. both times. Right, and um, what made you want to stay? Um, I really enjoyed my time there. I did really well. I played very good football there. Like personally, I was playing well, and the manager had a big 
big bit on me and there's obviously he was a big call for me because I worked with him before and I came back and then I done really well and now he wanted to really sign me and stuff and I'll be honest it's a club on the up that's the feeling they've got new owners now and we're after I don't know if we're signing a few players so like I wanted to be part of the project interesting project yeah yeah, yeah and I think it it doesn't want to be obviously we're in League 2 now it doesn't want to be in League 2 it wants they said in three, 3 to 5 years they want to be in the championship and then pushing for the Premier League so nice I was like yeah I want to be a part of this project and uh, the contract was nice so it's like <laughs> yeah we might as well go for it mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Do you, do you feel that, like, when you're having conversations, again, you hear that a lot, like, I want to be a part of the project and so on, but, like, when you're having conversations with staff, the gaffer, players, even directors yeah. and so on, do you get it, do you think it's easy to to see if they're being false with you? Or do you yeah. think it's 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 easy enough I to know. tell, okay, they're, they're spoofing a little bit? The only, that's a very good question. Sometimes you can, because, you know, you just know, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, this time was different because they came in, like, so they wanted to sign me. T- so when were we? So the season's finished in May. They came in early April. They wanted, said, we wanted, you know, we want you to be part of the team. We're, we have ambitions and stuff. And we want to get, we want to push up, like I was saying, new owners and stuff. And when I came in, I was the eighth signing in January. So they signed 10 players wow, in January. Really? Yeah. So I was like, okay. I came in, we didn't lose many games. Like, we were near the bottom of the league, but I came in, I think, on the form guide in the second half of the season, we were second. So I was like, okay, yeah, it's, it's on the up, we're doing well, and we're just after signing another player there. I don't know if you know, you know, Johnny Williams? Oh, he used to be Sunderland and Palace yeah, and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just he's signed him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He just had exactly. bad injuries, didn't player, he? But he's a great yeah. player, yeah. Yeah, so we just signed him yesterday, so... That's Jesus, another good that's player. Great that yeah, is a big so that's yeah. another good player through the door. So I was like, okay, it's really, yeah, it's looking yeah, good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I was just, and the biggest thing as well, I was playing every week. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. I was because I remember chatting to you about yeah. it when I was uh, when you first came in this uh, summer, where a lot of players, young players, will go. I want to go to this club because of their history. I want to go to the, to the club, like. But when you're yeah. a senior player, if you have a manager who wants you and wants to play you, that yeah. is what you need to need as a footballer yeah, so to speak exactly. and you, you were kind of quite clear on that that if you have a manager who likes you and wants to play you then it doesn't matter what, what, what colour what animal's on the badge no. like it's, yeah. it's games you know because once you're playing and everybody's looking at you mm, that's what I've exactly, learned yeah, yeah, yeah. once you're playing you could go anything you're in happen. the window yeah. yeah you're in the window if you're not playing you're not in the window yeah. so that's why I was just like I want to go and play and just express myself and show you everybody you've in a couple do. of years like that if they, if they exactly. go well or can go well for you personally you know exactly so yeah and you do you're, you're still you are still young in, in football years like you do have a lot of time which is uh which is nice you've accumulated what we have here is 70 senior appearances thus far i think it is possibly a couple of cup games could be out of that who knows but yeah, say no, it's is in, that on wikipedia yeah, yeah it's probably a little bit off probably, a bit, probably off, yeah. a bit off yeah it's near about i think i'm on 90 something. yeah okay yeah so nice yeah. That's, that's that's good gone. Mm. Yeah, yeah good gone. Well, listen, I would have liked a bit more, but I was going to say everybody was wanting a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, everybody, it's yeah, like the race yeah. to hundred, isn't it? Get that yourself a hundred appearances. Mm. Uh, that's all we ever hear is get yourself as many senior appearances as possible. But for you, your your story is very interesting because yeah, you're post or pre Brexit, pre going away early. You obviously went away. What age did you go away? Oh, I was fifteen. Yeah, I very young. Yeah, yeah. Very young. That seems almost foreign to us now, doesn't it? That idea yeah, of going away go so 18, young yeah. now. You see players playing the National League getting 50, 60 appearances before they even get it close to going across the water, which yeah. is actually not a bad thing, obviously. Yeah. We actually think it's a good thing because you get, you're you with senior men yeah. before you go over and so you're, you can mature very quickly. Good. But how did how did you find it going over so young? Do you know, I was just buzzing to be going over. That was me being honest. I just couldn't wait. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, the first few weeks, though, it's tough. Do you know what I mean? 15. But the way I did it at Liverpool, to be fair, they did it very well. They did it, the first, like, I was 13 or 14, that's when I was kind of knowing where I was going. Yeah. I went every second week for three days. So I okay. they liaised with my school, so I wasn't missing out because I was doing my junior shirt at the time. Okay. So every second week, I'd go out for three days to Liverpool and train with the team, playing on Saturday, and then I'd come home Saturday night or Sunday. And then I go to school in Solutions in Selbridge. Nice. And just do that for every two weeks. I was playing with Luke and United at the time as well. Mm. So, like, that was nice. It was kind of a... Put me into yeah, this situation. Yeah. Getting without me just with, dropping you Without in, like, me yeah. dropping it. Yeah. Where some, most players, when they go over, they're straight into it. 
first year scholar and it's it like hits you hard yeah mm. where i didn't really have that because i knew what i was going into because i had done it was that for like a, a couple of, a year or two they done yeah. that or a few so yeah the next year i done it every week when so, f- okay right. yeah so the first year i done it every second week the next year i done it every second or every week so you'd so. go three days yeah home for four three days home it was tough though yeah. Yeah, it's a, lot a lot of travel yeah it killed me yeah, yeah. yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend doing it if I'm honest. Yeah. Like this every second week was fine. Yeah. But every week was tough. Yeah. You can't yeah. get settled anywhere. No. So, and you're going over to play football and you're probably not playing as good as you want to play. Yeah. But that's what Liverpool wanted. And, you know, you're not going to say, yeah. oh, I don't want to do this. Do yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. 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 No, no, you're definitely. Yeah, right. so. Makes a lot of sense. Um, And then obviously, as Liverpool, you were captain on their yeah. age level. Obviously, you had a very good youth career. You ended up captaining the Irish 17s, 18s. Is that right? Yeah, I'm on well, I've, I've had Probably at most levels. Every level, actually. <laughs> 15 <laughs> to 21s, I had a... Well, I wasn't the 21s captain, but... Yeah, you had, you had yeah, featured yeah, as yeah, a captain. Yeah. That, that's an incredible achievement. Regardless yeah. of how like a senior career goes, yeah. most people don't even get to see an Irish kid, let alone yeah. captain your country at yeah. nearly every level. That's incredible. Mm. So, very good stuff there. Um, Just one more uh, step to go. Hey, one it. more <laughs> step to go. Dead right. Dead right. Um, how did you... How did you say... Obviously, uh, Luke and United, it's nothing compared to, to Liverpool, but obviously you were playing at a good level here. You played with Trav, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Match. I played with Mark for yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a great team, didn't you? Yeah. We had a really good yeah. team. A lot of players went over to England. Yeah. Brandon Payne, I don't know. I don't know if you know. Yeah, yeah another name. Oh, went to yeah, Celtic. Yeah. Uh, Sean Whelan went to Preston. Yeah. Yeah, we had a few players. We had eight or nine who played in the Ireland setup as well mm. at the time. So, mm. like, we had a good team. Jamie Ahern. Yeah, he yeah. was on trial. He actually went on trial at Liverpool as well. I remember him. He was over with me. Yeah, we had a good few players. Like mm-hmm. we had a good team. I miss those days. They were great days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how did you um? How did you find academy football in Liverpool? Oh, I was different. It was tough, but it was good also at the time. I really enjoyed it. You know, you're playing with the best players and not just. Ireland, but England and the world as well. Mm-hmm. Like at, even at that age, they were bringing over like Spanish, Italians, whatever you name it. Dutch. We had a few Dutch players in our team, so I really enjoyed it and I had a good team. I had a very, very good team <laughs> at the time. Like uh, who have I had? I had obviously Trent was in my team. Trent, you know, oh, well, actually, yeah. yeah, he was in my team. We had Ovie Jaria. I don't know if you know him. He's at Reading now. Okay. Really good player. He played for Liverpool. Cam Brannigan. Yeah, Harry Cam Brannigan. <laughs> Sergi Canos, Pedro Chiravella, we had a lot of mm. talented, talented players. So, like, yeah, it was really good. Like Curtis Jones. D- right yeah, there. yeah, the, the, the standard across. And the amount of players, obviously, Trent is obviously the most notable, or whatever. Yeah. But even all the other boys that end up playing championship yourself, playing, yeah, like go across the leagues, yeah. the standard is still uh, oh. like outrageous when you look at it. Like, how, yeah. how, how many. The whole idea of like you don't make it Liverpool, you don't make it. That's nonsense. Yeah. If you go and get a professional career out of yeah. your game from an academy level, yeah, it's fantastic. Like that, that's so difficult to do considering because oh, yeah. you have the highs, the highs of playing at one of the biggest clubs yeah. in world football, and then if you don't get a, a senior appearance there, people think yeah. no, that I haven't done it. But to go and have a career anywhere at any level is oh, still an incredible feat. Exactly. Yeah, and I just. I, I look back on it with fond memories, if I'm honest. I don't look back, oh, well, a little bit. But listen, I had a bad injury and that happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. football, that's exactly, the cycle yeah. of football. Mm-hmm. And you just have to get on with it. Mm-hmm. And I've learned, it's made me stronger as well mm-hmm. as a person and, and as a player. And I just think, yeah, when I look back at my Liverpool days, yeah, with fond memories. Very good. Um, So when you went over there, did you notice how... N- how ready were you for that transition in the sense of as a player like did you find in them training sessions when you first went over um did you find right technically i'm a little off or technically Um, i'm really on or physically or was um did you find you fit it in i i i'd say i was i'd fit it in Mm. yeah i felt confident in my ability that i was going to do well Mm. so i was when i went there i was confident and i yeah like i was it was the type of my kind of personality as well i was just I wanted to get stuck in and You're ready to go. Thing, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I felt about it, yeah. Mm. Nice. You were on the bench yeah. for City, yeah. Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Funny story, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, so I was, I was actually, it was actually my last year with Liverpool. I was in my last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and I think it was Christmas and at the time the 23 that we all got like a week off mm. but I, I got we all, a few of us got called back early because obviously the games were going on the first team and there was a few injuries in the first team and I got called back early and I was obviously buzzing to be trained with the first team but I didn't think I'd be over mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we were trained we were trained and uh, a few players were injured obviously in the centre half and I was doing the training and stuff and uh, it was the day of the game and then for the Champions League games you, uh, Klopp trains in the mornings so they do like a bit of like set plays or whatever yeah, shape yeah, work yeah. and uh, and if you didn't if you weren't like playing or like just uh, like not playing at all you were uh, like doing the little boxes you know the rondos mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah. I was in the rondos and stuff and uh, we were finished training grind, and I'm walking in to, I didn't know like we don't know what's happening and Jurgen Klopp comes up to me and puts his arm around me and he goes how do you, how are you feeling I was like yeah, I'm feeling good I feel happy and he's like well you're going to be in the squad tonight you're going to be on the bench and I was just like oh my god he said make sure you tell your family and get them over he said yeah, so yeah. I was like oh my god so I was just like in shock do you know what I mean yeah, this yeah, is like yeah. one of the biggest games Champions League and it I was doesn't just doesn't get like, any bigger yeah like. so I was just like right Better ring me that. <laughs> get over here. Get the flight. Yeah, it's mad how that happens. The yeah. G Man's pulled a quo who here, right? Oh, that Jurgen Klopp I came out. Oh, oh, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> Three words, but it's very funny. Yeah, and I, I, oh, I think you're a very funny character, to be honest with you. We're I all, think it's going to sum up your, your personality, to be fair. Yeah, so yeah. Obviously, to give context, Klopp came out. He obviously said it in a press conference, I think, yeah. whatever, going into the games, because obviously your, your name would have been listed on the bench. Everyone like, like who's he? Yeah. Yeah. Who's he? What's going on? And he, uh, his quotation was, I'm not sure if this is typical for Ireland, but when I said to him that he'd be in the squad, he said, I'm ready, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready, man. Great, I love that. It's nah. a great quote. It is a good quote, but it wasn't exactly like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. He did kind of Yeah, he made, he made it. you look good. He, he made you look good. I was just like, yeah, I'm just buzzing. I'm ready to go. That's what <laughs> yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready, man. But yeah, uh, I remember that. And everybody I was getting, my phone was blown up over that I was. Because really? Everybody was messing. Yeah, yeah. to God. That's because mine. everybody was just like, yeah, did you actually say that to him? <laughs> it's like, no, I didn't say that to him, but listen, I'll take I'll it. I'll take it, yeah. That's yeah, good. it's good, it's good. Uh, what was that, like, the game? So you're, because oh, at any stage. Yeah, I know. You, you could come on. I know, because That's I remember. Thing. Who were the centre halves, can you remember, on the day? Lovren and Van Dijk were playing. And then yeah. what would the cover, like, were you the me. only centre half? It was me, yeah. yeah. It was literally me. Because Gomez was injured, Matip was injured, and at the time Clavin was injured. So yeah, it was me. <laughs> so it was a bit crazy. Yeah. But I remember I was watching. I was sitting there and watching it. I was like, at first I was looking around. I remember we were going out for one. I was like, oh my god, because that's when they started the first. Ale ale ale. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's when the first night the song started. Oh. So I was just looking around the stadium and uh, I was just like, oh my god, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? This is mm. what dreams are made of and I remember uh, seeing my mum and dad waving at them that was like a nice moment yeah, as well, yeah. a proud moment my dad was like this to me and I'll oh, give him the <laughs> give him the big yeah so it was nice but I just remember sitting there at first I was so nervous yeah. I'll be honest I was so nervous but as the game went on you know when you're watching it you're focusing on the game focusing what they're doing I kind of just relaxed and relaxed and relaxed and I was like I'd love to get on here do you know what I mean yeah, they were training yeah. up do you reckon he'll throw me on for yeah. like two yeah. minutes or something? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But they you, still had a second leg. So yeah, do I you can find understand. when you're watching that game, like were you kind of watching the City players at the centre forward and kind of going, yeah, oh, what's 100%. he like? What's he going for today? If I'm in, how should yeah, I deal with him? Were exactly. you kind of, did you find that when you're on the bench? Oh, 100%. I was watching Aguero the whole time. <laughs> like most of the time I was watching Aguero. Yeah. He was playing. I remember he was up front and they had Sane. I can't remember who played Sterling it. maybe or could have been yeah yeah, could have been yeah Sterling. but I remember Sane was up against Trent because because I just remember it clearly mm. and I just remember because at the time Klopp was big on you know doubling up for Trent on Sane so mm. every time I just remember him shouting at Oxlade Chamberlain Oxlade Oxlade just, yeah, get yeah. over and help Trent do you know what mm. I mean so I was watching that and I just remember obviously Aguero his movement just like he was really good and the best in the that, business like yeah but I thought on the night, obviously they won 3-0, I thought the two lads played really well. Mm. Everybody played well that night and the atmosphere was just, it was crazy. <laughs> it was cra Actually, do you know what? When we were going to the game on the bus, that was the most unbelievable feeling I've ever had, honestly. 
I remember, you know, when you're driving on the bus yeah. to Anfield, the crowds and crowds of people and the flares and, you know, the scousers, yeah, they're, yeah. they're wild. They're mad, yeah. They love it. So we were just, you know, all the la- all the players had their phones out, like, oh my God, and stuff. It was just a, it was a crazy night now, yeah. It was an unbelievable night. Do you find that, or even sense it from the lads, because obviously the boys know who's starting, the, yeah. the, the big boys, your Van Dyke, your Trent, they know exactly what it's like. They're on the way in, on the bus, they see all that. Do you, they're obviously enjoying the moment, but do you find they get emotional or are they, as in, like they're very, okay, let's get going? Or is it, right, lads, relax, yeah. calm down, exactly. go out, warm yeah. up and win the game? Yeah, Milner's big on that. He's yeah. a big talker in the dressing room. He was yeah, a he big was when he talk. met the Brighton, yeah, he moved yesterday. Yeah, 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 but I can see why he kept him around for yeah. ages. He's a really good leader. Mm. And he was saying just before that, lads, focus, focus, just things like that. No one was getting ahead of themselves. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, that was, no, they weren't, Obviously, it's it's nice seeing all yeah, the crowd yeah. and all, but no, no, it didn't fluster anyone. Yeah, that yeah, way. yeah. No, yeah. that's the feeling I got when I was on yeah, the bus. Yeah. It's interesting. It seems like with what Milner done. That seems like in when you're thinking about it, it seems like such a simple thing to do, just mm-hmm. tell people to relax. But when everybody's uh-huh. there and the buzz, everyone's like, "Geez, this is unreal." Yeah, and the timing and it, of it, it nearly it's infectious. Timing, like, yeah, yeah, it's infectious. Exactly. Whereas that. for him to actually be able to pull himself out and got now, like. We need to, yeah. Quite got a, to we got a game exactly, to win, yeah. yeah. Got a game to win. You know, it's, it's interesting. When you're running around warming up, yeah, like yeah. the warm up, the, the, the atmosphere starting to build. You've already seen the atmosphere outside. You know, it's a huge game, Champions League. It doesn't get any bigger no. at home in Anfield. I always, I'm curious about this. It's going to sound like a strange question, but you're in the middle of your warm up. Your, your your coach is taking a warm up. Do you have any clue what he's saying? <laughs> or are you just like um, just do you know what? what the lads are doing I'm trying to think you do listen to him but half the time I was just looking around I swear yeah. to god I swear to god I was just looking around that night I was just like oh this is crazy checking the shoulders checking yeah, yeah. the shoulders I was oh. scanning for days <laughs> <laughs> I was scanning for days I was it was just but yeah you can't really hear him mm. so when yeah. they go out on the pitch it's mostly off instinct I reckon that night yeah yeah you, you can't Anfield's me- I've never been to it now for a game, but it sounds like a, a cauldron. The, you know the Barcelona one? Yeah. The won. comeback? Yeah, the, the comeback. Wow. I was there that night. <laughs> I have, I've never been at a stadium like that. Really? That night. Wow. Never. I swear. Like the whole game, the whole stadium stood up. We mm. didn't sit down. Wow. From start to finish, the, the fans were on their feet. Like that was the first... I've, because obviously when you're a younger player academy play you go to every home, home game, game. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you go and watch and all but i'd never experienced that that's mad like we stood for the whole game every single fan stood for it the whole game that's crazy it was it was like there was something in the air that night mm. i swear it was crazy you probably yeah. sense it going into a game like that it was almost especially when you get the first goal when like you get the first goal yeah. similar to like istanbul yeah when that happened you got the first goal it's like right yeah. switch it on now yeah. and then you can almost sense it like you said you can feel something that it's crazy footballs like that isn't it yeah and some days it just doesn't work out just doesn't work out no <laughs> just, just doesn't football happen. happen football you, is crazy yeah you mentioned an injury when, what What was the injury and at what stage oh yeah so was that? Like, basically it was so we played that quarter final yeah I was then a uh, week late I think it was on the Saturday so the game was on the Tuesday or the Wednesday then on the Saturday it was the Merseyside Derby I was on the bench for that one mm. away to Everton and then I think a few of the first teamers were back. I think Gomez or Matip, one of them was back. And I wasn't in the squads and stuff. And we were training and he brought everybody to Rome. So we beat Man City the next game. He brought everybody to Rome. So I went to Rome. Just, with, I just with the squad, like because I was with the first team yeah, training yeah, yeah. and stuff. So he brought everybody who was with like in the first team squad, he even even if you weren't like on the bench, you were coming as well because you'd nice. be training because obviously you train over. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. So we got to do that, and then obviously the game, and that was unbelievable as well. And then I think yeah, last it was the three days before the last game of the Premier League season. So they had got to the final of the Champions League it's three days before, and I think there was no. F- so I was training, right? I'll just explain this, the scenario. I was training, it was just normal. It was one of the harder days, you know how you do a... You do a harder yeah, midweek yeah. or whatever it exactly, might be. Exactly, yeah, a midweek yeah. one, so you got a bit harder. And uh, it was like a possession in a half the pitch. So it was like a 10 v 10, but it was like half the pitch. And it was like a possession. And the ball was going out of play. And I went to keep the ball in play. And whatever way I kept it in play, I fell... And I landed awkwardly and I was like, oh. 
I hurt my knee, but I didn't want to say anything. So I carried on for another day and another day. And I just remember my knee just went, blew up. But I had a chance of being in the squad. So I was like, I'm not missing this. Yeah, yeah. And you can, do you know what I mean? And then I was like, no, nah. it was about, it was the day before and I was running in the train. I was like, no, nah, I can't, I can't run. Yeah, My yeah. leg's gone here. So I went for the scan. The game was on on Sunday against Brighton. Brighton, or was either Brighton or not Bournemouth? Bournemouth, sorry. So we were playing mm. Bournemouth. I went to get an MRI the day before, or the day of the game, sorry, in the morning. Went to the game, sitting in the stand, and the doctor called me into the dressing room. He has like his own little office in Anfield. Yeah, in Anfield, yeah. So I walked in, he goes, I uh, got your results there. I was like, all right, what are we saying? He's like, you're after tearing your meniscus in your knee. Fuck. Yeah, so I was like, Oh my god! And then uh, he gave me crutches. Yeah, you need to take. You need to have an operation. You have to get take your weight off it for a few days. So then I'm walking out, and obviously there've been loads of injuries. And I rock, so Klopp sees me on the crutches, and obviously he's you know he's annoyed about all the injuries, and he's seen me, and there was another one, and he was like he got a bit angry because someone got injured, but it was only because he was like oh my god, there's another one. Yeah, and it, it was all just emotions and stuff. Mm. I remember thinking. Oh, I might have to upset him. What have I done wrong and stuff? And then, yeah, and then basically, uh, so that was Sunday. And then the Monday or Tuesday, I went down to London and I went to, you know, the 40th clinic. It's like a, it's just like a, the, the specialist. Yeah. And he says, yeah, you have to get a keyhole surgery. So I went and had a surgery and I was out for about 12 weeks, I was. Mm. But because, and then it, after that, I was meant to go to Marbella because they were going to Marbella for a warm weather training before they were doing the Champions League final. Mm -hmm. So I would have been involved in that and stuff. And I still went to the final, to be honest. They brought me and mm -hmm. I, I was able to bring my family and stuff and it was really good. But I just remember like I couldn't make pre-season. And that was, a, that was a bit of a killer because then I was like, oh shit. You had such a good end to the year, yeah. personally. Yeah. And then like, someone, the momentum you can have going into the another, new pre-season. And obviously Nat Phillips at the time, I was yeah. ahead of him. He got his chance. Yeah. And that's just, it's just the way it is. It's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. And it was a tough, it was a tough one. And then I had a year, obviously that year I was with, and I wasn't really with the first team then. I was with the 23s. I was half bit in and out. And it was just mentally, it was a tough year. And then uh, at the end, they were like, you know, you're not going to be with us anymore. And they told me about two or three months ago. And they were like, we're going to release you and stuff. And that was the toughest moment of my life. If I'm honest, coming back home. That com or that conversation. That like, conversation, yeah. yeah. And it was just, I remember it. And it was a tough time. It was a really, really tough time. Because, you know, you go from that mm -hmm. to that. Within nine, ten months. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. It yeah. was crazy. And uh came home and I remember I was just like, it was tough. It was tough. But then my agent rang, luckily. And the way I felt, I was obviously broken hearted, crying most days, I'll be honest. It was a tough one to take because you were at Liverpool, you know. Big yeah, club yeah. and all. And uh, came back, came back to Ireland. It was like summer, came back and uh, I think it was around just the end of June, start of July. Yeah, it was the end of June. My agent rang me and he said, uh, QPR wants to sign you. And they offered me a two year deal and you're going in on July 1st. So it was like five <laughs> days later. I'm in I'm to in. QPR. And you know what? I never felt so, not relieved, but like, just like, what's the word? It's just like, priv not privileged, but like, I was just like, I have another chance. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Grateful, I suppose. Gra grateful, that's the word. Yeah. I was just so grateful to be still playing again. Yeah. And it's, I went to QPR yeah. and my attitude towards it was, you're just playing football again. Do you know what I mean? I'm so grateful. And you know, I was playing really well. And then I went to QPR and then I was kind of, I was with the first team at the time. So I was good. It was good. And then it was January and the FA Cup came and the manager said to me, you're going to play. We played and we won 5-1 in the game. and Rose Royce loved it. <laughs> loved it. We beat Swansea 5-1 and then played Brentford, came on, made me championship debut then. And then I played about played about 15 games. Yeah, I played 15 games. And it was just going really well. And Yeah, so you can just see how football went. Yeah. And then obviously I signed a new contract that uh, QPR, they offered me a new three-year. So, you know, that was great and all. And just... 
that's the football move. Yeah. But what, what was the time difference between you coming home from Liverpool, like being obviously devastated, and then the QPR phone call? Like, uh, are you so talking I a week or two or a few weeks? No, basically. Sorry, I'm sweating it. <laughs> it's always roasting. Yeah, it's roasting. because of this. No, it, no, it's, it's just warm. It's just roasting. <laughs> warm up here, It's just yeah. warm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't well, know what it's about. It was a few weeks. Yeah, it, was, right. it must so, be tough, though, to go from like being like that down and devastated and then going, right, well, you're back in. Yeah. You're, 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 you've got to go again. Like. Yeah, but you know what? I was just so, like you said, I was so grateful. I was just like, I want to get back out there. I was nervous, obviously, but I was more like, you know, because I wanted to play football so much, I love it so much. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to get back somewhere and playing. And mm. when I got there, I was just so, it was so nice, do you know what I mean? Back yeah, at the yeah, club, yeah. playing again. And I was just grateful for it. Big club as well. Yeah, yeah. Very big club. Yeah. yeah. Did you, the way you sound even the way you're describing it there, I could be wrong, but mm. do you feel like when you came back from Liverpool in that time, yeah. did you think that was it? A little bit. I did a little bit, mm. you know, because as the weeks go on, you're like, hold on, no one's coming in here. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I've yeah. been at Liverpool. What's, you know, yeah, man, what's going yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely I can get someone, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, I'll be a bit honest. I was worried a little bit. I think it's just a natural... Yeah, and that's, no, it is. And it, again, it's nice that uh, Jamie Egan spoke very well as well on the podcast the other day. We had him on. Uh, that footballers are very vulnerable, like everyone. Oh, just, as, just as much as me, Daily Finn, all of our staff, everyone's the same. Yeah, You're, You could be vulnerable and you are vulnerable at yeah. every stage of your life. So it's, it's nice that you're open about it. But it is, uh, it's incredible how quickly it changes turn. again. Like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. From... Top what, top. Looking around the, one of the biggest games, Champions yeah. League, and all of a sudden it's like right, you get an injury, huge low, then mm. that leads to over time, yeah. gradual, not decline. I don't want to say that word, but yeah. if now you're no longer at this club, and then all of a sudden now you're, you're back at QPR. Again. Yeah. You're back again. I know. How know. do you how do you do you have a method to balance emotions or do you find you're quite self aware, or is it just ride the wave and see how you get on? I know what you mean, yeah, but I think I did speak to people, like I spoke to psychologists and stuff, yeah, and yeah, they do, good. you know, they it does help the wave of you, say. Mm -hmm. But I just remember, yeah, I don't know, it's just, I think it's such a big, it was so up and down, and I was young. Very young. Yeah, I was, well, I went to keep you on when I was 20, so yeah. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I don't know how to explain, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how emotionally it did, I don't know if you can help it, but it just, yeah, yeah it yeah. was a bit wavy, I'll be mm -hmm. honest. But as I've got older, I've, I've learned much better how to hmm. to deal with it. Like mm -hmm. people forget how young, like you were. What, what, sorry, nineteen, twenty at that time. Yeah, roughly. Like, like people might be in their mid twenties and they might lose a job or whatever. Like, and they're they're ninety five and they find that devastating. <laughs> it's like, crazy. Try doing that when you're still like a nineteen, twenty year old. Still, I know where you're an adult, but you're still like oh, a kid, you're still really. a child. So like, you yeah. look at people who come out of school at seventeen, eighteen, yeah. having a clue what day it is, having a clue what's going on. People finish college at 24, 25, yeah. and still having yeah. the clue what's going on. It's You've had all these great, unbelievable experiences, yeah. but with all the positive, there's a lot of downside to that: yeah. injuries, yeah. mentally being fatigued, challenged, oh, men's yeah. dressing rooms. It's not, it's nowhere near easy. Like, as easy we, as it's painted. As, as it's painted. No, out, yeah, the social wages, media world. Yeah. 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 The yeah. wages, the cars, the lifestyle. Yeah. It's not that. No, you it's know, not. It's tough. It, it's, it's really very, not that. very tough. Exactly what you said. It is. Mm -hmm. It's so tough. But I love it as well at the same yeah, time. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We yeah, all love it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's the thing about it. What would I, people ask me, would you change things or would you, I'd like, when I was younger, or would you have went to, Liverpool would you have done that but the thing is when I look back at it I wouldn't have changed it do you know what I mean find a kid who wouldn't who would have made a different decision I mean? like you know, what What? people people say like you you were saying like now they they stay well obviously you have to because yeah. they can't yeah. go over till they're older but they they play here first and then when they go over first team level they're more adapted to it yeah mm. I think that is a good way but when I when I was at 13, 14, 15, I, I couldn't turn down. Yeah, everybody was. Yeah, yeah. Oh, everybody was. Sorry, everyone was doing the same. Because people do ask me though, oh, would you not stay at home and play for it's, Pats or Rovers or something? Try tell a 15 year old kid yeah, that, like going to Liverpool, I mean? like it's one of the biggest clubs in the world, like yeah, you can't. It was, it was just, it just wasn't, just wasn't in my agenda at all. I don't, yeah. honestly, I don't think anyone would, yeah. would make a different decision. Yeah. Like if I'm a United fan, for example, like if like United came in for me when I was that age, I don't think anyone could talk you out of it. Yeah. And you'd probably hate the people who do talk you out of it yeah, because what if your career doesn't go the way you want to anyway? And you're yeah. like, well, it could have went to Liverpool or United, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, 
definitely. But I still think like I'm obviously I'm 24, but if I have a good season now, I think it could go not maybe not reach that top top level, mm. but I can go back up. 100. percent I yeah. still feel like I could reach the Premier League. That's mm. how I feel in my brain, mm-hmm. in my yeah. head. I I don't think that's unrealistic either. No, I don't think that. No, you've got time. Yeah, you're fit. Yeah, you want it. Yeah, I think that's the biggest. You just thing. need a year. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, exactly. You just need one good year. I was looking around. I was looking. Uh, there's a goalkeeper who's at Leighton Orient. I think he could be going to Burnley now, and yeah. he's in playing against me in League Two. Yeah, it's, it's honestly it's, it's crazy. But like football. you said, you have to be playing. If you're yeah. playing, you're. That's the biggest thing. You're there. I was like, talking to Zach yesterday. He mm. was talking to me, Zach, mm-hmm. and he was like, "He's at Blackburn, but he wants to play more regular." And he was mm. like, "Cause I didn't realize Zach was telling me yesterday he was at Liverpool as well." Did you know? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. yeah. Under oh, I didn't realize. Realize. He needs a podcast as well. He's yeah, a Zach, Zach's story story's crazy. Yeah. yeah, his Zach is. He was at Barca, you know? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Nine <laughs> to mad. eleven, Barca. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Then went to Liverpool. That's mad. I didn't know about him, and yeah. he was telling me I was when you were a bit older. I was in younger in the, the academy with yeah. you. I didn't even know. He just told me yesterday. Yeah, yeah. How mad, isn't it? And mm. We're about in one to one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy. Done. It's crazy, and yeah, it was just it's just football, isn't it? It's yeah, a crazy world. How did you um find Klopp? Because he's obviously yeah. held as a, in the highest regard as a manager. And yeah, his man management skills were really good. I remember uh, his training and stuff. It was the first few months I had gone up there, uh, and I was like training and stuff, and I said. There was a sports science there called Cunnel Marta. He was Irish. He says, and I was like, I wanted to know what he wanted me to do more. And he mm. said, why don't you just go up and speak to him? He's open. He's His office is open. Go and speak to him. And I was so, I said, right, f*** it. I'm sorry. Go. I'll, go and, I'll go and speak to him. So, and he was just, he was really good. He said, I was like, what do you want me to work on? He says, he, he laughed. He's like, you're only 18. You have to work on everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was telling me and stuff. And, uh, he was like, you know, the way you play, I really like. You remind me of John Stones, he said. So that yeah. gave me so much confidence. <laughs> yeah, that gave <laughs> me so go. much confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way you play is like, yeah, and I, that gave me a lot of confidence. You know, and that's one thing I think he's great at. He's good at making you give ten everything. Ten foot tall. Yeah, like, ten yeah. foot tall and going out on that pitch and being just a superhero. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the one thing I think he, like when I was there, he didn't really take the training. He really? just stands in the back and watches it and he'll come in a bit yeah, and yeah. talk but yeah that is the biggest thing I thought about him was his man management like with players and you can just see it that's what obviously they had a tough season this year mm-hmm. not you too. did you get like, one of his famous hugs yeah <laughs> big bear yeah, hug big bear yeah. hug he loves it doesn't he's he big, he's big isn't he he's, yeah he's, he's solid he's, me like he's about 6'4 like 6'5 big lad, he's yeah. a big guy yeah yeah he's a big guy but yeah that's the biggest thing I, thought, I remember like his man management skills with players like when you think about it, like Salah and all these players, when they came to Liverpool, they weren't like exactly. superstars. He's made a lot of he made big players like big players, like big Lallana, players, yeah. Henderson. Yeah. That's the one thing I thought, yeah. He just knows how to get players like loving themselves, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Making them feel a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Obviously being a centre half, you've played with arguably the best centre half in training for yeah. years, mm-hmm. Van Dijk. Is there first of all, what's he like? Really nice guy. Yeah, seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he's a sound guy. Mm. He's just jokey, loves yeah, loves life kind of guy, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just good to be jo- around like, yeah, yeah, enjoys yeah. life. Yeah. Have you picked up anything either from watching him or has he ever just said something to you and you're like, that resonates big yeah, time with me? Something yeah. very specific, maybe for centre halves. Do you know what? I don't know if he's noticed when he goes up to head the ball. He probably, you probably haven't done your research and stuff. But that's one thing when I was watching him, I remember. Like, he does it a little bit different. As he goes up for the bo- header, he turns his body. So he goes side on. Mm-hmm. And he gives them a nudge and jumps up. Even if they're the biggest, but he's the timing of it, he mm. does it, is perfect every time. That's why his, his headings is like the top, top yeah, of yeah. the charts. And that's one thing I think I took from him mostly about it. I wouldn't say what he is. Is he a big talker? I wouldn't say he's a massive talker. Mm. When I when I was in training, maybe he was just chilled out and he yeah, didn't yeah. really want to talk. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's the one thing I learned because you know when you do like crossing and finishing or practicing skills, like clearances or something. Yeah. That's the one thing I caught from him. I was like, oh God. His timing and his way, timing of when to nudge the man. Mm-hmm. And not fouling them and yeah. just doing enough. Like, and yeah. even... 
when he goes up to head the ball, say he doesn't win the header, because he's side on, he can run back. Yeah, yeah. yeah way Do you get me? Yeah. Change of pace then. Change of pace. Quick. Yeah, so he actually doesn't really get caught out yeah. because of that. That's one thing I learned from him. Mm -hmm. That's the That's biggest it's thing. It's just simple. Simple thing, but so effective. So effective. Yeah. 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 That's the one. That's what separates thing. the best, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Just the details. Mm -hmm. That's Tiny, the biggest thing. Micro little details. Yeah. It's always intriguing to see. Obviously, if you see them every day, you got to see one or two things. You see deal. a few if things. If you don't, yeah. you've got to know calm he is as well. Like, he doesn't get flustered one bit. Really? Yeah. Just so calm. Yeah, yeah. Like, on the, even on the ball, like, mm -hmm. a fella could be sprinting at him, but he knows, just gets that half a second. Very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He seems it. Yeah. <laughs> he's, 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 he's only dominated world football for how many oh, years now? Stop. It's crazy. Um, that is crazy nice. pedigree of players. Do you want to yeah. touch on there? Not particularly, to be honest with you. I would, if I'm being 100% honest, I would love to get you back on again. Yeah. Because I think we need to get a couple. Your story is so vast. Yeah. And I think this time next year, we need to get you back on and see yeah. how you've done this year. Because I think yeah. you do have a good year ahead of you. Yeah. Um, Hopefully the project in, in Gillingham goes well. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it would be a good one. If you can stay fit. Yeah. Please that's the biggest thing. And then Please yeah. God, hopefully so. And that's it. You you never know. Yeah. Like this time next year, this conversation could be completely different. Yeah. It could be Which so different. Is could be so different. It's yeah. scary to think six months, twelve months, football yeah. can do a lot Change of things. A lot of things yeah. But exactly like you said and, and David was saying, if you're playing, you're fit, you feel good. You never know. That's the biggest thing. Like I'm know. just, I'm confident. I'm happy, and that's why I'm playing. Like I scored, I went to Gillingham and scored in the first five games, and then your confidence grows yeah. even more, and you're doing things like that you wouldn't have done before because you're a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. But you're not nervous because your confidence just grows, mm -hmm. and like you said, that just comes from playing Being on week the pitch. Yeah. yeah. No. It's interesting. Very good conversation. I think it was really important. You actually, you said it early enough. Where sometimes people think that because you were release from an academy and it happens here where people players yeah, maybe yeah, leave an yeah. academy football at under 17s with the Irish teams or or 19s level with League of Ireland that all of a sudden you're a failure but no. a career in football is the goal and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily at Liverpool or United or wherever it's yeah. wherever you end up after you exactly. know so I think there's a quite important message there because some kids would see this and see I was let go from X team yeah, and I think I'm a failure but it's not mm, like it's like you it's said not. within two weeks you go from being down here and all of a sudden QPR and you're back. Yeah, you know? exactly. That so, was it. You know, it's it's think, really important. Yeah. And we appreciate the honesty as well with, with everything you yeah, talked about. Yeah, that was about. A quite, quite an honest transparent. one, wasn't it? That was yeah. quite an honest one. But yeah, that was that's the truth of my career. But I still want to get to the top level. Mm -hmm. Even good. And I want to play for Ireland. So <laughs> that's Get the ambitions. green back on. Yeah. <laughs> Love, Love that. Love yeah. that. Because all the other lads we've spoken to thus far, all of them are under 21. Yeah. That's correct. It is, yeah. Yeah, they're all on 21. Yeah, thus far. Thus far. So you're the most senior player, but you're still only 24. You're still very young. <laughs> still very young. I was only messing at the start when I said you're getting up there. Uh, <laughs> no, 24 is young. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty. No problem. Genuinely, when I say vulnerability, that is something that you don't it, see yeah, from yeah. footballers. Mm -hmm. It's great not to experience that. Great in terms of you grow as a person, grow as a man. But um, to speak about it very openly, considering this is your first ever open podcast, that's not a media trained <laughs> yeah. interview. Yeah. Thank you for that and and um, how well you spoke and how you came across in uh, the conversation. So we really appreciate your time. Really appreciate your time. And we will very much get you on next year. <laughs> yeah. 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 See Definitely. What happens between now and then. Um, yeah. And of course, we'll get to work again next summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, no, thanks for having me, lads. No appreciate problem it. at all. No problem Over at all. Now. Thanks for watching. Listening. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>